Watch you guys today we're taking a look at what is the optimal virtual memory size for a Windows system. Now I've seen so many videos on YouTube about tweaking this and also so many articles online about the secret source of uh, you know virtual memory settings and how you can get the most out of your PC by changing these settings. And all I've seen in the past is plenty of instability with a computer when you mess around with this. But we're going to go through it in this video and I'll show you exactly uh, what can uh, be changed and how you can change it and whether it's worth changing. So first off, here we are in system properties here. And uh, basically what we're going to do is go to the settings in the performance options here. And you'll see a common theme here because a lot of YouTubers will make videos on this, especially for gamers and people like that. Inside here, you're going to see a virtual memory uh, setting here, which is your paging file. So you can see by default, automatically manage paging file size for all drives, paging file size for each drive right there. And it's automatically being managed by Windows itself. Now, Windows can manage your page file just fine. So in my personal opinion, you're probably best to leave it alone and let Windows deal with it. But a lot of people say they can get more performance by turning this feature off and then going into their custom settings here and customizing it themselves. You can choose which drive you want to do this on. So inside here, if you've got some memory in your system, maybe 16 gigabytes of RAM, I've seen people even telling you to turn it to no paging file because you don't need a paging file when you've got 16 gigabytes of memory or more. And I've even seen people turning this off with eight gigabytes of memory. And let me tell you, you're gonna end up having blue screen of death and you're gonna have a bunch of different issues if you turn off your paging file. If you're opening up a lot of Adobe apps and things like that, you're gonna have a lot of issues when you have this turned off. Now this is where it gets a bit controversial because if you have loads of RAM, i.e. 32 gigs, 64 gigs, 128 gigabytes, or whatever it is on your system, because people are blessed with loads of RAM nowadays at a very affordable prices, your computer shouldn't be really using the page file that much in typical uh, usage. So people might want to turn that off, but you could run into some issues. And if you do, you'll know it's to do with your virtual memory or page file, and that you can generally uh, know that it's going to be that that's causing the issue. So give it a try if you want to, if you have loads of memory available, but here you can see on the Microsoft website here, they will explain how much you can use and they don't really tell you a lot. Just like everyone else on the internet, they're guessing and no computer is the same. It says users frequently ask, how big should I make the page file? There is no single answer to this question because it depends on the amount of installed RAM and on how much virtual memory that workload requires. If there is no other information available, the typical recommendations of 1.5 times the installed RAM is a good starting point. And it goes on to say on server systems, you typically want to have a significant amount of RAM so that there is never a shortage and so that the page file is not used. On these systems, it may serve no useful purpose to maintain a large page file. On the other hand, if the disk space is plentiful, uh, maintaining a large page file, for example, 1.5 times installed RAM, does not cause a problem. And this also eliminates the need to worry over how large to make it. So pretty much they tell you there. Now they're talking about server systems as well, about large pools of RAM that they have and also space. So really uh, we're not gonna be talking about it on lower end systems. I've seen people trying to tweak this on four gigabytes of RAM, which is just pointless. So you're gonna end up with loads of problems. So you can see here, down here, how would you set this up if you wanted to give yourself a custom size. And I'll show you quickly how they're saying to do that. It's basically going into this custom size here. The way you would do that is the initial size, which is in megabytes here. This will be your recommended settings, which is based at the bottom of the screen here. I'll show you. It's this area here. So inside the custom size, initial size, we're gonna be using the recommended. Now yours will be different to mine, and it's this area here and you're going to put that number in the initial size of megabytes. So let's go ahead and put that in there, just like so. And uh, I'm going to put that in. Now, how do we do the maximum size? Well, the maximum size will be, let's start off with 1.5 times of the size of your memory. So how do we go about doing that? Well, it's pretty straightforward, and we're just going to calculate 
what size of memory we got. So let's start off with eight gigabytes because eight gigabytes is a pretty normal size for everyone, but you just use this setting for everything. So we're going to do eight times one zero two four. Let me go ahead and put that in there. And then you can go equals and you should have 8,192. Now we're going to times that by 1.5. So times that by 1.5, which is what they recommend. And then click equals and you should have now a figure there, 12,288. And that would go in the maximum size here. Now this is where people on the internet will make up their own figures and start putting in three times. And this is when things will become unstable for some people. So if you want to do 16 gigabytes, you would do 16 times and you would do 1024 and then click equals. And then, of course, you would need to times that by 1.5. So let's go ahead and do that. And this will give us a, an, a maximum size of 24,576. And you'd put that in the maximum size right there. Now, if you're doing three times, that would be different, of course, but we're sticking to the 1.5 times and you want to make sure that your system is stable. So now for 32 gigs, you would do 32 and again times 1024. And then you would obviously push equals and then you would multiply that by 1.5. Let's go ahead and times that by 1.5, just like so, and then push equals. And now we would have a maximum figure of 49,152. You just follow that all the way through to the amount of RAM that you have and you would get your maximum size that you would put in that box right there. So whether you've got 64, you would just do the same thing. And it's that simple. Now, this is going by the method of uh, Microsoft using the 1.5 method. Now, if you did times three, you would do 32 times 1024. And then you would obviously push equals. And now we would push times three. And then we push equals and you would get a larger figure. So once you do a larger figure here, you'd get in quite a large uh, number there which would go into the maximum size if you're using the three times method now the quickest way to make your system unstable is doing this with very little ram and starting to use virtual memory and pushing it too far and what will happen is you'll start getting blue screen of death with memory issues and stuff like that so bear that in mind when you're messing around with trying to do this manually because really when you're doing this manually like this you're trying to take control of the memory yourself. And again, there's no known uh, tried method apart from you doing it yourself, because once you do it on your system, everyone's system is going to act differently. Uh, everyone uses their computer differently. And by putting these figures in here, you may use it and you may have no issues at all, but some people may start getting blue screens and errors and running out of memory and all this sort of stuff. And you can end up with loads of problems. And that's why. I always suggest leaving it on automatically managing page file size and letting Windows deal with all this for you. And you don't have to worry about it. You're not going to see a massive amount of difference. And with modern day computers being as fast as they are today, I just think this inside here is a little bit obsolete in my opinion. I just don't think people need to mess around in here anymore and cause yourself a lot of instabilities on your system. Because you've already got SSD NVMEs with super fast speeds. We've also got super fast memory, DDR5 memory now with super fast speeds as well. I really don't see the point in it, in my opinion. And all you're going to do is cause yourself a load of headache. If you look inside Task Manager here, it will give you the available memory that you have. And it will tell you how much memory you have on the system. And you can also see here cached memory and a bunch of other stuff inside here and your uh, page pool. So really, that is all there is to it with the uh, page file and a change in your virtual memory settings. This is something that's been going on for many, many years. It's not new. And of course, people like to make it sound like it's something new that you can find extra performance in your system. But they're probably using some old third gen uh, Intel processor with some Dell Optiplex or something like that. And they're looking for uh, more performance from that old potato machine because someone on the internet has told them to buy these machines because they're great for gaming and stuff like that. And if you're in a pinch and you haven't got a lot of money, then you can use one of them Dell Optiplexes or HPs or whatever it is you're buying for pretty cheap and get it into a gaming system and try to play some games on it. 
But really, at the end of the day, if you want performance, buy a new PC with a modern day CPU, RAM and uh, NVMe drive, and you'll probably find that you will never look back on them old systems anymore. Now, I'm not saying those old systems don't serve a purpose to a lot of people because they do. And if you're wondering why you're getting input lag and micro stutters and things like that, it's because you're using old systems like that with a modern day graphics card and you're going to end up getting bottlenecks and micro stutters and things like that, micro freezing. It's just the way it is with those older systems. And you can try to alleviate a lot of it, but a lot of that is due to the age of the system. Anyway, with that said, I hope this video has been some sort of use to you. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Quick shout out for my YouTube members. I appreciate the support and I shall catch you in the very next video. Bye for now.